Hello chess friends and welcome to Zalos Chess Channel and welcome to my Nimzo Indian Defense series. So in this series we are covering a very nice and effective weapon while playing against D4. So today we are continuing with the Tory attack. In my previous uh, video I have covered the Tory attack with the uh, uh, sideline C3 move. Today we will cover the sideline E3 move. But again it will be sort of a passive variation uh, and we are a little bit warming up uh, then we'll come to this most aggressive line of the Tory attack but first of all I wanted to show you these calm lines and of this Nimtso Indian setups then we'll come to this aggressive and tactical lines which uh, will be more explained and will be more covered because there are really some uh, nasty nasty tactical threats that you should uh, should uh, take care of and that's why first here some introduction videos of this uh, Tory attack then we'll come to this very very dynamic game so the line that i wanted to show you today is this queen on b6 and then after that uh, queen on c1 by white and uh, you see what's all about what are the ideas and how should counterplay these types of lines uh, it's again i don't think such a good line that white can choose it's really sort of a passive setup uh, you can try this dutch defense setup all the stone wall setup that i wanted to show you today so let's see what's all about what is this line and what are this best continuations of this uh, Nimitzo Indian setup. So let's see, d4, uh, knight on f6, uh, and then e6, and now uh, if your opponent tries here to move bishop on g5, we have now the third attack, and, the, and my recommendation here is to play immediately the move c5. So now we come to this move e3. Uh, this e3 move is the preparation to play c3, if we of course take then uh, white in some occasions would try to move c3 he would then have a freak fixed pawn structure in the center you can try uh, the move d5 but it's again sort of a queen's gambit decline setup in which you don't have such a good activity with your uh, light square bishop so on the other hand white could coordinate the attack here with the move bishop on d3 so that's why my recommendation is not to trade off uh, the pawns in the center in the game i recommend you here to play the most aggressive way uh, queen on b6 attacking here this uh, b2 pawn and uh, in my next videos we are going we're going to cover this bishop takes an f6 doubling pawn situation idea and then after queen on b2 so sort of a poison pawn variation but today we'll do combine with this move queen on c1 and um, it happens most often that uh, white will play this move because he will uh, try to protect his b2 pawn uh, he will also not weaken his pawn structure with the move b3 uh, because then of course you have some weaknesses here on dark squares if you make the move b3 so my recommendation is now to play knight on e4 getting out of this uh, very annoying pin here because uh, it's not a pin but it's a positional threat the threat is of course to take bishop takes on f6 and, and then after g takes f6 uh, you have double pawns if you want then after that to castle here on the king side it could be dangerous because then you have many weaknesses so weak pawns and weak squares in front of your king so that's why knight on e4 getting out of this positional threat of white so you can try bishop on f4 we'll also cover bishop on h4 it's similar it's not a huge difference now my recommendation is simply to go knight on c6 and the first instructive game that i wanted to show you in this particular line it's a game by jonathan sarfati against uh, ian rogers Ian Rogers also a very very strong grandmaster here knight on c6 now with the preparation to play d5 and in the game here uh, white tried the c3 now d5 you see you have already uh, I think a good position here uh, black has his uh, really his cemented pawn structure here in the center but you have a good activity with your queen you have a natural ni uh, knight here on c6 you have an outpost at knight on e4 still a huge activity with your bishop if the position of, of course allows it again this bishop on d7 is a little bit blocked out but there are similar ways how i can make this uh, bishop working here in the game your opponent try, can try knight on d2 and now my recommendation is to go into the so-called stonewall formation now uh, if your opponent takes uh, here for instance knight takes on e4 then we have f takes e4 and you see uh, after maybe knight on d2 we would then have after bishop on e7 castling here a very nice open f file and then we can also try the attack here with the move g5 it's uh, unlikely that white will go castle here on the queen side because you have opened already the c file after bishop on d7 we have possibilities uh, to play rook on c8 and then c takes d4 will open the c file still you have to make many moves i hope you realize here with the queen in order to make 
queen's castle happen so probably white in this uh, types of variation will castle also on the king's side so in the stonewall formation uh, here uh, white tried bishop on e2 bishop on e7 another problem now we have this move knight takes on e4 f takes e4 and here white tried also an outpost knight on e5 but here black, black simply castled uh, now uh, castled by white and now bishop on f6 also very important move because we are threatening now uh to take if for instance i don't know maybe a passive move like uh, rook on uh, rook on e1 then we can really simply take after bishop takes bishop takes but now we have a very very powerful mobile pawn structure in the center we can try bishop on d7 bishop on c6 and then rook on uh, d8 and then we would uh, really really open the position here for for the four rooks the queen still has to search for a good square you see white will need at least two more tempos in order to improve the position of the queen our queen is perfectly fine our queen is attacking and that's why here i don't think that uh, white will allow such a scenario that's why um, here in the game after uh, bishop on uh, uh, bishop on f6 knight takes on c6 was played and uh, you have now several choices you can take with the queen or you can take with the pawn my recommendation is to take with the pawn like uh, black did like um, um, really in this game because uh, here after c takes d4 you have then the opportunity to again attack the center with another c pawn so although these uh, pawns are doubled but you can really undouble them easily that's why it's very very important here to take with this uh, p pawn b takes c6 bishop on d6 and now uh, ian thomas finds a very very nice tactical idea he played c takes uh, d4 leaving the rook hanging uh, here after bishop on f8 we have d3 uh, advancing the pawn here bishop on g7 was played we have bishop on g7 bishop on um, g4 and now c5 you see how very powerful this pawn structure in the center is we have a mobile pawn structure with five pawns in the center this uh, pawns are really controlling the center of the board queen on d2 and now we have rook on b8 rook from a to b1 now bishop on d7 i'm not going to explain now all of these moves uh, through this tactical uh, possibilities i just want to show you now uh, the main idea is this outpost the stone wall formation then after that to create a powerful center and uh, create some possible pawn breakthroughs h3 we have queen on a6 b3 bishop on e8 was played we have f3 and it's possible mistake because now we can lock the bishop with the move h5 f takes e4 we have uh, h takes g4 e takes d5 e takes d5 h takes g4 and now bishop on g6 rook on c1 but now after queen on e6 uh white simply resigned because in the next move we can really fix here this uh, bishop on on e4 this queen is stuck a little bit for, to this potential advance of the pawn here on d2 so that's why i think this is a completely winning end game here for black so let's see now another example here um it's a game by Alexander Kochev against uh, Lu uh, Alexei Lugovoy. Here, d4, knight on f6, again the same setup. The Tory attack, we have bishop on g5, and now c5. Uh, we have e3, queen on b6, as I said, my recommendation, attacking this b2 weakness. Now queen on c1, and now again uh, knight on e4, getting out of this positional threat of whites. We have bishop on h4, and now knight on c6. Again, healthy development moves. Now c3, and again d5 knight on d2 again uh, here black tried to undermine the pressure here in the center with the move c takes d4 after e takes uh, d4 now again this stonewall formation with the move f5 supporting the uh, knight on e4 here we have knight takes on e4 f takes e4 and now knight on d2 and you see now the problems we have an advanced pawn and uh, the queen is also attacking this very important dark square diagonal because if uh, white castles now on the queen side uh, on the king side pardon me then there are maybe some tactical shots with possible uh e5 moves so really opening the position for the for the very well placed uh, queen here on b6 so bishop on d6 also natural move we have knight on knight on b3 and now a5 also a very important move Whenever you see that your opponent is placing your knight, uh, his knight on b3 or on g3, there is also always this possibility to kick it away, like here with the a5, a4 possibilities. And of course, if your opponent places the knight on g3, then uh, h5, h4, because now we can also advance to h3, 
then we can even further the pawn structure on the queen side we have bishop on e2 and now h4 we have knight on d2 and now castling simply by black and uh, you see now the threats uh, the threats are of course uh, here on this very weak f7 with some possibilities to maybe crack the position with the move e5 and now we have knight on f1 uh, black uh, white is desperately trying to create a blocking system here and maybe place the knight here on, uh, on uh, e3 in the game e5 play was played anyway trying to open the position we have bishop on g3 and now eight, uh, a3 very very important move b3 now knight takes on uh, uh, d4 a uh, very tricky uh, tactic here because uh, white stayed with the king in the center too long i think now after c takes d4 we have bishop on b4 you have to cover with your knight and now queen on d4 you see this bishop is out of game it cannot participate in the defense of this of this knight so that's why castling simply was played and now after bishop on d2 this was basically game over because these two central pawns are too much to handle and uh, this was of course completely completely winning for black i'm not going to show you now the whole game uh, i'll send you all of the pgns that i used in this video in the description below so you can analyze the whole games maybe find even some better uh, tactical shots if if the position uh, allows it of course but uh, here i uh, hope you realize with these two central pawns we have now six uh, pawns on the board white has only five pawns but the more important thing is that we have this centralized pawns and this would be very very hard to battle here for for white so let's see now uh, the last example it's a game played by uh dajavek uh, sharvadoy against uh, so aung tan uh, and this was really one of the most instructive chess games that i've seen in this particular line let's see what's all about we have d4 knight on f6 again this torre attack with the bishop on g5 now my recommendation c5 e3 and then queen on b6 queen on c1 and now knight on c6 we have c3 again this uh, idea knight on e4 attacking the bishop bishop on h4 and now d5 bishop on d3 again this stonewall formation these are the main strategical elements as i said uh, you can really repeat these moves i think you have a comfortable game here at least you have at least uh, equalized the position if uh, i think you're even better here uh, as black because you have a really really nice control of the center and you have always the possibility to crack the position here on around the square d4 casting was played bishop on d6 we have a3 preparing even some b4 moves and here uh, black tried simply queen on, uh, bishop on d7 and now white played bishop on g3 uh, white is trying now to simplify the position wants to get uh, rid of this uh, bad bishop because the bishop wasn't good here on h4 it was out of game meanwhile i hope you realize this uh, dark soul bishop of, of blacks is perfectly fine so that's why you see white is uh, trying to give up a uh, bad piece for a good piece here after bishop takes on g3 we have uh, h takes g3 but now rook on c8 very important move because the queen is still on uh, on the c file so if the position opens on the c file then we have some discovered attack possibilities and uh, what to do here from what's perspective with the queen you cannot advance the queen on c2 you cannot uh, advance the queen on d2 because the knight is covering and if you play d1 then you have played with your queen on the uh, on the starting square and it would be good of course so knight from b to d2 was played and now simply cat we have now similar pawn structure like in the dutch defense but i think this position is much much better uh, than the common dutch defense here bishop on um, c2 with the preparation to may play maybe the bishop on b3 and have also some discovered attack possibilities here uh, on, on the king rook on f6 also a very common idea in dutch defense setups in, in the stone formations to play a rook lift and then rook on h6 uh, is perfectly fine with the preparation maybe to play g5 g4 and similar ideas deflecting this knight from the defense of this h uh, h2 and then maybe get the queen somehow into the game and even checkmate here uh, through the h file but uh, rook on e1 was played <coughs> rook on h6 bishop on a4 and now knight on b8 this is a very very important moment i think whenever that happens to you when your opponent is trying to play this bishop outpost here and tries to give up maybe his life for bishop for for the knight be prepared because um, if you play something like i don't know <coughs> rook on effect there's always this positional threat 
to play simply bishop takes on c6 and after uh, bishop takes on c6 you see you have well it's bad bishop here it's blocked out by this pawn on d5 it's blocked out by this pawn on d on b7 so that's why this was really a tricky positional move here by white would move bishop on a4 uh, trying to get a, get rid of this uh, very ba bad bishop and that's why knight on b8 simply trading off also a very bad piece here the bishop on d7 bishop takes on d7 knight takes on d7 and now knight on f1 we have g5 as i said the main idea is to play even g4 uh, deflecting this knight uh, c4 and now we have c takes d4 e takes d4 and now rook takes on c4 queen on e3 you, i hope you realize now there are several weaknesses here in white position the pawn on d4 and also the pawn on b2 are our main targets now so queen on e3 knight from d2 f6 knight from eight uh one from the first rank on h2 we have rook on c2 and you see now this um, is uh, already i think a winning game here for black because this is a weak um a weak f2 pawn we have also weak b2 pawn we're simply continuing to attack the weaknesses rook from a to c1 rook takes on f2 we have rook on c8 but it's another problem we have simply king on g7 rook on c1 and now very very tricky stuff here um rook takes on uh, rook takes on h2 with the preparation to play a queen on b2 and then uh, attack this g2 weakness so the g2 is already attacked so that's why here uh, white tried rook on c7 king on h6 simply getting out we have knight takes on h2 but now queen on b2 there is now the serious threat of taking the pawn to, uh, here on uh, g on b2 uh, knight on f1 we have uh, rook takes on g2 king on h1 and now <coughs> very important move knight on g4 now this knights are really dancing around uh, white's king so that's why it's very very dangerous here queen on f3 had to be played but now rook on f2 kicking away the queen again here we have a counter attack uh, rook on c2 but now rook queen takes on c2 uh, now of course rook takes on c2 but now we can simply take rook takes on f3 and uh, the game was prolonged but i hope you realize this is a completely again a completely winning end game here for black uh, black is a piece up and has also many many pawns and uh, that's why uh, black won the game very very easily okay uh, let's go back as said these are the main main strategical elements here so here this uh, outpost of the knight on e4 in these types of variations because the queen on c1 it is sort of a good move it protects the b2 but i hope you realize that in these types of positions uh white didn't have uh, such a good activity with the queen meanwhile you had a uh, very nice activity with your knight on e4 it was really hard to battle here uh for white against this knight on e4 if you take you see then we have an advanced pawn which is also then a main strategic element so as said i don't think that you should have so many worries about this queen on c line uh, queen on c1 line and as i said we'll continue to follow this story attack now with uh, some well really aggressive lines with some queen trap possibilities and with some decoy deflections double attacks and many many of these great tactical motifs that can happen to you in a chess game so meanwhile you can watch my other nimzo indian defense series please watch this series from the beginning so from this introduction video then of video number one two three four and so on and you can also watch my king's indian videos if you want to see a more aggressive way how to play against d4 and you can also check out my hyper accelerated ranks and ceiling defense series in which i cover you a very nice and effective weapon while playing against e4 and you can also subscribe to my channel if you like this content thanks you for watching guys and chess is the best of course